All right, y'all, so let's develop some formulas for circles and regular polygons. Um, so it says up here, right at the top of your sheet, maybe you know this already, it talks about the circumference and area of a circle. So it says that the circumference is equal to pi times d, or the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, because d is equal to 2 r, and area is equal to pi r squared. So we'll go through how to use these quick. So for this first example, we're supposed to find the circumference and area of the circle on the left. So we will find the circumference and the area. We know our formula for circumference is just pi times d. We know our formula for area is pi r squared. So, in order to find the circumference and area, we'll need to find d and r. Luckily, super easy to find in this case. It gives us the distance across the circle, which is the diameter. The diameter is defined as the longest point or the line through the center of the circle, uh, which happens to be the longest line you can draw within a circle. So, that right there is going to be... 6, so d equals 6, so that means that, I'll write it over here, c equals 6 pi, and you can just leave it, um, leave it in this form as the simplest form. We won't even ask you to multiply it out to decimal form every time because that ends up with some nasty decimals, and this is pretty cool to look at, just 6 pi. That works. So the number really ends up being about 18-ish because we're multiplying 6 times 3.1415, so on, so on. So the circumference really is about 18-something all the way around, but we're just going to call it 6 times pi, okay? So now that we have the circumference and we know the diameter, we can find the area. And we can find the area because we know that D is equal to 2R, right? So 6 is equal to 2R, which means that R equals 3. And I just did this math from the given diameter measurement. And so if we plug 3 into here, we'll get pi times 3 squared. And we'll simplify that over here. That will give us 9 pi. So similarly, we can keep it in terms of pi, uh, but let's also note that the entire area of this circle, so the entire coverage that it has, would be about 27 units squared, because that's 9 times 3.14, so on, so on again. Um, I actually think it would be somewhere around 28, but <clears throat> just so you can visualize the actual area that it has. It doesn't, like sometimes it's hard to say, oh, it has nine pi area. But if we were to say its area is 27 point something something, then we can kind of gauge how big it actually is. So that's the first example on the left here. Um, let's work through this example on the right as well. So our task for this one is going to be to find the radius of the circle described on the right. So I'll switch markers here, switch sides. Um, we are given a circle X with a circumference of 24 pi centimeters. So we know that our circumference is 24 pi centimeters. And we want to find the radius, which equals, almost tripped over the chair. We want to find the radius, which is equal to half of the diameter, right? And so if we know that the radius is half the diameter, you can barely see that over here, but here you go. Um, we're going to try and find a way to find the diameter, because that's the missing piece in the puzzle that we want to solve, right? And so let's find another place where we can find the diameter. So right here, we see that it's not in the area formula, so we're probably not going to use the area, but it is in the circumference formula. And we know that the circumference is 24 pi. And so if we 
want to find the diameter, we can set 24 pi. Since that's equal to the circumference, we can set that equal to pi times d. And we can solve this just like we solve any other algebraic equation. We can divide by pi on both sides because that is a common factor. And we'll find that 24 equals d. But we're not done there, right? Because d is equal to 2r. So that means that r is going to be equal to 12. So in both of these equations, we used the formulas that it gave us, we used the information that it gave us, and then we had to put puzzle pieces together to figure out how we could solve for the variable that we were trying to find, right? Um, so lastly, in this video, we'll go over this section real quick. Uh, this is talking about regular polygons. So the center of a regular polygon, so this is what we know as like pentagons, hexagons, uh, things like that, all the way up to dodecagons, or I don't even know what the biggest one is. But I know a dodecagon isn't the biggest, but that's the biggest one I could think of. So a regular polygon um, is something that has all of its outer shapes being similar. Um, and we'll go through the other definition of this too. So the center of a regular polygon, switch markers again, the center of a regular polygon is equidistant. So that's equi, so almost like equal, but E-Q-U-I, and then distant. equidistant from the vertices. What's a vertice? Well, the singular form of vertices is vertex, and the vertex is where two objects meet. So the vertices in this polygon would be here, 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 and here, and in the middle, right? But these are where two objects meet, so these are going to be the vertices. Each one is called a vertex. Um, the apothem Sounds like saying opossum with a lisp. The apothem is the distance from the center to the side. So that's going to be this right here. I don't know. Yeah, y'all can see that. So that's going to be the, the distance from the center to the side is called the apothem. Um, and then next we have a central angle. So the central oh, Got to write that in. Equidistant, or the apothem is the distance from the center to a side. A central angle of a regular polygon has its vertex at the center. That makes sense. Central angle, center of the polygon, right? And its sides pass through consecutive vertices. Right? So its sides are going to pass through this vertex and the vertex right next to it. So that's why they are consecutive vertices. Each central angle measure of a regular n-gon, so this would be a 5-gon per se because there's five sides. We call it a pentagon. Um, but each central angle measure of a regular n-gon is 360 degrees divided by n. And so that's why we use the term n-gon, because if we were to say 20-gon, uh, uh, we probably weren't going to be able to draw that out. We're probably not going to be able to find um, or be able to measure each little angle there. But we'll know that each central angle, so each one of these little guys, is going to be 360 divided by however many sides are in the figure. So in a 20 gon, it would be 360 divided by 20. In this case, it's 360 divided by 5, which would be, oh, I don't even want to do that math. I'm sorry I said anything. Um, 
But yeah, so each central angle will be 360 divided by 5 right here. Um, and that is a regular polygon. Actually, before I stop, I'm going to say one more thing. So the formula for the area of a regular polygon with apothem A, it says that down here. So we define the apothem to be A. And perimeter P is one half A times P. So if we take A and we have perimeter P, right? So we add all these sides up and we get our perimeter. Our formula for a regular polygon with apothem A and perimeter P is one half A times P. So the area of an n gone is one half a times p, and that's written here as well. Uh, I just wanted to write it out as my own, uh, but that concludes this video, and that concludes most of this section of notes. Thanks for tuning in.